Hello everyone and welcome back to AR76. My name is Alex and welcome to another episode of my Formula 1 Championship Edition career. Welcome to Season 3! We've arrived! <laughs> As we saw last time out, we only had test contracts from uh, Williams and McLaren. So we had to go for the Super Aguri. Wow, you gamble and you put everything on red and it comes out black. Or in this case, the white and red of the Super Aguri Honda Formula 1 team. Hey, it's going to be a great season. I promise you that. It's going to be exciting. And we had an amazing dominant run at the end of the last year, which was cool. But I think this year we want more fights. So then, let's begin again. So, of course, we just had a brilliant streak at the end of the season. And it all resets again. If you want to see the uh, points... Then head over to the previous episode and you'll be able to see the points at the end of that video when uh, we went through the championship table. Of course, we won the championship. Honda taking the constructors there. Ferrari will be out with a vengeance this season. Mark my words, they are going to be on it. Felipe Massa will be looking for redemption if he could. And hope you never know, maybe he'll win the championship this year. We have got our work cut out. Now, I did some practice, um, which I didn't I admittedly felt the need to do. But this time around, I, I felt I just had to do setup work with this car to try and make it as grippy, but also as slippy as possible. Um, because particularly going through turn nine, the car just wants to step out and it's horrible. So I had to kind of find a nice medium to try and see if I can get it working. Because here's the thing. There are two fundamental flaws of this car to keep it simple. Probably half a million, but the main are it's a customer Honda engine. So we haven't got that works package that we enjoyed last year. But also, we, we also have a very terrible basic chassis compared to the RA06. Uh, Rubens Barrichello replaces me at uh, Honda. And I've replaced Takuma Sato. So I have got the uh, privilege of teaming up with UGE Day. Already out in Q1, starting from the back of the grid. Button and Barrichello out in Q2. So I think we were overdriving that Honda a little bit Uh last season now something you may have noticed as well on the screen as we head through into turn one is the lack of driving line i promised we were getting rid of it this year um but i kept it anyway because for, for last season because we started the year with it and also i think there are people who want to play this game and the tracks aren't laser scanned so there's now footage out there with the with the racing line um, a few things as well. The races are longer. We've now gone to 30% races. I didn't want to go to like a full 50 or 100. I definitely think that might be a later season. Maybe for the final season we'll just do full 100% races. Um, but that's neither here or there. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be great fun to do. So longer races, which means we should get a lot more tyre wear. Uh, which is going to be awesome. As you can see, that back end just stepping out into turn 9. And, uh, well, going through turn 9 into turn 10. Um, but with that being said, yeah, the, the, it's just going to be such a different game this time around, I think. Well, it's not going to be so different, but you're going to see a lot more tyre wear. You're going to see a lot more strategy. And we're in a very terrible car. Trust me, it's going to be tough. Um, as we saw in Q1, we just managed to get through into Q2. And then qualifying 2, we found a bit more pace and got a bit more use to the fuel loads of the car and everything like that. Um, and of course, something you may notice on the bottom left. That number is significantly higher because the longer races in qualifying, you run the full fuel load and then it comes back down to strategy. It's a little bit weird how this game works, but it does mean that we've got a very heavy car. So I did as much as I can coming across the line now. 137, 138. We've got a 138.9. That was enough for P4. And I just felt I couldn't really get anything better than that. So I called it a day and said, we're going to start in fourth position for this race. I thought, second row, really good beginning. It puts us in that prime position to make a real difference in this race. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've got no support, no teammate, nothing. We're pretty much on our own this time around. But anyway, it's race day in Bahrain. So here we go. You guys have been patient. I've been busy over the last few weeks as well. Um, I've taken up a lot of training in the gym. Uh, I've actually got a new personal trainer and everything, which has been awesome. Um, so if you head over to my social media on Instagram, you'll be able to see some of that. Um, which is why I just took a little bit of a break from the series. But we're back. 
And we're going to be doing these races on a weekly basis, I've decided. I think it's a really nice balance. I don't want to spend too much time doing this because I don't do get paid for YouTube or anything like that. But I love doing it. So that's what I've decided to do. Looking at the grid there, it's an all-Ferrari front row with Fernando Alonso in third and myself in fourth. McLaren's in P3 with an Italian uh, row four and a German row five. Heading further through now, any big hits there, of course, uh, it looks like it's all pretty standard stuff. Speed at the back there, E-Day in 21st, our teammate. Now, as well as longer races, I decided, you know what, I'm fed up of cold tyres at the beginning of race. So this is our formation lap, you saw that new formation uh, starting uh, light format. I didn't really know the words I was going for there, but basically... Um, We've got to do the uh, warm-up laps now, and it was something I decided to add in um, to try and get heat into the tyres. And I'll be honest with you, AI is a little bit erratic and creates large gaps behind. So I decided I wasn't going to follow the 10 car rule because I'd only be sat on the grid forever waiting for the AI to come through. And instead led the rest of the grid, knowing that the Ferraris <laughs> would be on cold tyres uh, along with Fernando Alonso. So that's what we did, and it was very cheeky. As you can see, the grid's already lining up, and we're pretty much ready to go. Thank you for your patience, guys. If you enjoy this series, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and share these videos across the world. But it's that moment you've been waiting for. Season 3 of F1 Championship Edition begins... Now! Getting a really good launch there. Fernando Alonso slow off the line. We've got the two Ferraris. We're right behind the... Felipe Massa, we're looking to the right-hand side. Those Ferraris, they've got something on us. As we head through into Turn 1 now, the Ferraris jostling side-by-side. Side. It's Massa versus Schumacher. Schumacher winning on the outside of Turn 2 there. As we head through up into the next section, heading into Turn 4, uh, the Ferrari straight-line speed was a, was an issue last year. And believe me, it's a problem this year. Felipe Massa going in for a real overtake there, running a little bit low there. A little bit wide going into the turn. Nothing to be too concerned of as we head through now into the next section. All going pretty smooth right now into turn seven. We're getting really, really good exit there. We're going to dive it through into turn eight. There we go. On the inside there of Felipe Massa into second position. What a start. Wow. Making up two places at the beginning there in the slowest car on the grid. I will remind you, this is going to be the slowest car we'll ever drive in this career mode. So if we can do well in this... We can do well in anything. And I'm hoping, of course, as the season progresses, we may get a contract with someone like Red Bull or Toyota will come and pick us up. We won't be in this car for the whole season. I think the moment I get a sniff at a midfield car, I'm taking it. Um, as we head through now into turn 11 and 12. And uh, there we go. A little bit of contact there with Massa. I just did not want to knock that front wing off. It had been a week since I'd filmed uh, the last episode of this. So it's actually a week old footage for me. But that's neither here or there. Meanwhile, uh, Fernando Alonso dive, having a look down our inside. And I said, not today. But there we go. Another move. A little bit aggressive on my side. I didn't want to be too much of a dick to the AI. And there is Fernando Alonso taking down the inside. And I thought, I'll try and slip in the slipstream. But look, it makes no difference. We are going to have to fight with everything we've got. Now, that sector two area, turn six, seven, and eight, suits us down to a T. As we head, to, head through to go to defensive against... Uh, Juan Pablo Montoya, Kimi Raikkonen right behind there. And I'm thinking if we've got the speed in that sector two, we might be able to get that position back. It's highly possible. Meanwhile, uh, Michael Schumacher leading the way. Felipe Massa in second. Fernando Alonso in third with myself in fourth. Montoya in fifth and Raikkonen in sixth. Down the inside, we're going to go into turn eight again. This time, repeat of what we did with Felipe Massa. A nice move. And this time, I know what the AI are capable of. As, we this, as this time, we head through into the... Uh, Third lap of the race, going to the right-hand side. And the AI, not brave enough to make an aggressive move. They're not that aggressive, but I don't want to be too um, breaking the rules. I'm going to try and keep as much as I can to a one-move limit. I mean, if they're right behind me, you've got to keep the one, one rule. But if there's more of a car's length, you can weave about. You know, and there we go. Head through into the next turn now, into turn four. Breaking heavy, locking up there, of course. No ABS at all. So that's going to make it really tough as well this time around. As we head through now, and... A lot of the race, as we head through about into lap 5, I think it is, um, you can see the tyres wearing out badly. Um, but also, I um, I pretty much had this for a long time. Alonso, right behind me. But we've built a gap to um, Montoya and uh, everyone else as well. But as you can see, that Sector 2, we're dominant. We probably got the best car in Sector 2. Meanwhile, the Ferraris are getting nice and close. Back end stepping out in Turn 9, going into Turn 10. 
um, as we head through now onto the sort of middle straight. I don't think this is necessarily the back straight. I think that's the one afterwards. All looking pretty smooth at the moment as we uh, keep pushing. But the straight line speed is going to be a major issue. Like, we've got Sapan coming up. That is two long straights. Um, I'm hoping if we can get the car set up enough for that middle sector at Sapan, we might have a chassis that we might have a shot at the win potentially. But uh, I feel we're going to be waiting a little bit on wins. Maybe Australia with the street circuit. Heading through now into lap 7. And we've now got Montoya joining the party. It looks like we're beginning a little bit of a truly train. Um, and having a look in the uh, garage as well, we can see uh, we have uh, the Honda, Toyota and the Midlands out. And that is Felipe Massa coming into the pits. Those tyres are orange and you can see the graining effect. Which I thought was so cool. I hadn't seen it before. I was like, oh my god, my tyres look shot. So I decided, you know what, I'm not chancing it, we're pitting in now, but especially if everyone else is pitting, I want to be on that same strategy, I've held them up. Now, I've released Alonso, I had a feeling he was probably going to get past me in some shape or form, so I said, let him go, and focus on what else we can handle. As we head through into the pit box now, it's a much longer drive to the final garage slot here at Super Aguri. Here we go, the mini game, the jacks come up, the fuel goes in, tyres come off, new tyres come on, very nice, the fuel rig comes out. Jacks come down again, lollipop up, 8.5, it's a reasonable stop. Not our best, but far from our worst. Heading out of the pit lane now, all keeping within that white line, making sure we don't get the penalty. There is Vincantonio Liuzzi in the Toro Rosso, Cosworth running nice and wide there, holding on the defensive a little bit. This car is so slow in the straights that even the Toro Rossos at moments were scaring me a little bit. Because we'll have a look behind, you can actually see him really challenging. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have to defend against the Toro Rosso. This is going to be a long season. <laughs> um, but as we head out now of turn four, um, he started to play a little bit defensive and held back. Meanwhile, we end up in front of Giancarlo Fisichella. Uh, and it all looking pretty good at the moment. Never points. I'm not sure how we're going to do with Alonso. It's going to be tight. Um, but I wasn't feeling the most confident at this point. I thought we'll keep the push going anyway. Uh, it looks like Alonso hasn't stopped yet. And as you can hear there from my engineer, uh, it looks like Michael Schumacher has retired yes we can see him on the minimap there there is michael schumacher out of the bahrain grand prix crucial means as a second place up for grab so we'll keep the push on keep going with everything we've got as we head through now into the uh with seven laps remaining and it's all looking pretty good at the moment but alonso huge lead now on us and, and, and massa is just oh he's gone he's gone we won't be seeing the rest of him in fact he has a 22 second gap as we head through to the last lap it, it was a fairly consistent run towards the end nothing really big happened e-day retired and there's a few retirements you're going to see in a moment our win streak of i believe it was eight or nine wins i've lost count came has come to an end but we have secured super aguri's first podium congratulations the minnows of japan make it onto the podium So there we have it guys a fantastic race here in Bahrain uh, finishing 22 seconds behind Massa he just charged off there with Fernando Alonso in second um, and there we go look Ide Montoya Schumacher Button Trulli Albus and Montero out in the driver's standings it's exactly what we saw there Barrichello picking up points on his return to Formula One and uh, having a look through as well, Heidfeld scoring some good points, so quite quite interesting seeing that. Ide up into P16 in the championship ahead of some big names. I don't think that'll be lasting in uh, <laughs> in Malaysia. Renault leading the constructors right now with Ferrari in second, Super Aguri in third, with McLaren in fourth. And uh, looking further down there, uh, Red Bull sort of hop taking that new back marker spot there in ninth. Who knows if they'll be able to get out of that position this year. Brazilian Anthem plays out for Felipe Massa. He wins the first race of the season. This was it's his first win for a long time. So fair play to him. Uh, Fernando Alonso. Could we see more of him in the title this year? And there, of course, is us in third. Of course, we've got... Um, looks like Sato's race suit. So it was a Japanese flag on my suit instead of a Union flag. But hey, I'm not, I'm not going to complain. It's a game from 2006. And it was pretty cool to see. Uh, those new Honda, uh, Super Guri Honda overalls, uh, slightly different. But there we go, guys. What a great episode that was. That was so much fun to uh, to film. I really enjoyed doing the race. I, I actually really enjoyed that race more than some of the previous ones. But hey, if you want to see what else happens, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video across the world. I'll see you in Japan.